Now, we have in chapter 17 one of the most familiar chapters, I guess, in the Bible. And I'm just going to hit the high points here because of the fact that it is familiar. We've all had this when we were in Sunday school. And this is the chapter that contains that familiar episode of David slaying Goliath with a slingshot. Well, you know the story, I'm sure, to a a certain extent. We're told now in verse 1, and I'm reading, Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together at Shachah, which belongeth to Judah, and pitched between Shachah and Azekah and Ephes Damon, and Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah, and set the battle in array against the Philistines. Now here again is the war of Israel with the Philistines, their perennial and perpetual enemy, by the way. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. Now they were at a standstill here. They were just waiting to enter the battle, and they didn't want to fight. It's sort of like what we had for so long down at the canal. Here's Israel on one side and Egypt on the other. Well, here it's the Philistines on one side of the mountain and Israel on the other, and a valley between. But here was the problem. There went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. Now, if a cubit is 18 inches, this man's a pretty tall man, as you can see. That means that he was about nine feet tall, and one span would mean nine inches. Nine feet, nine inches. He was a big boy, and he could have played center on anybody's basketball team or played forward, for that matter. He's a big fella, and certainly they want now to put the decision of the battle in the hands of this one man on one side and one on the side of Israel. And we're told that he had a helmet of brass upon his head. He was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. I'm not sure just how much that would be, but it was heavy. And we're told that the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron, and one bearing a shield went before him. Had to have one man to carry his shield. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel, and said unto them, Why are ye come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine, and ye servants to Saul? Choose you a man for you, and let him come down to me. Well, he did that every day, but didn't do a bit of good. Nobody's coming out. And David brought out food to his brothers. And when he got there, David was alarmed that no one would go out. And so his brothers try to send him home, but he's not about to go home. And when Saul heard about the fact that David would go against Goliath, well, he tried to put his armor on him, but David's just a boy. And he said, I'll just have to use what I'm acquainted to use. And by the way, what a lesson there is there, trying to be something that you're not or do something that you're really not called to do. And if God's called you to use a slingshot, friends, don't try to use a sword. If God has called you to speak, then speak. And if God's called you to do something else, well, you do that. And if God's called you to sing, sing. But if he hasn't called you to sing, for goodness sakes, don't sing. Today we have too many people that are trying to use a sword that really slingshots more their size. And so we find here that the thing that happens is that David goes out to meet him with a sling.